A supercell was cruising northeast at 30 miles per hour. After an hour of trailing this storm, I finally caught up to it, and as if waiting for me, it dropped a glorious tornado. What the tornado does next, I would have never thought was possible. That sucker's coming towards me. This video is about deviant tornadoes, unpredictable traps, and the barrage of deadly hazards awaiting storm chasers. Go, 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 go. After tailing the parent supercell northeast for an hour, it was surprising to see its tornado tracking the opposite direction. Though deviating from its projected path, it was moving slow enough for me to have some confidence to allow it to approach close enough to practically eat out of my hand. At this range, you really see the detail in the suction vortices, the smaller evil tornadoes inside the tornado. And it's right there. This close, the condensation funnel looks like an angel of death. A twisted waterfall writhing in reverse back into the heavens. A flutter in the windfield swayed the tornado into a graceful sort of ghost ballet. After a pirouette, the tornado glided back over its previous steps. I always wonder if the owners of the house had any idea their home narrowly dodged destruction. Twice. Witnessing an apparition like this is truly otherworldly, but this spectacle comes at the ultimate risk. Tornadoes can be deceptive and unpredictable. They intensify, grow, morph, and deviate any direction. And at this range, there's almost no time to react, adjust, and escape when the unexpected occurs. I've witnessed tornadoes turn hard right, bank left, do U-turns, suddenly accelerate, and go in reverse. Besides evading erratic twists, storm chasers have to anticipate unforeseeable escape route entrapment. Maps may give you confidence that a maintained road will carry you to safety, but they fail to inform when a stalled 100 coach train is blocking your retreat. Awesome. Or when the bridge is out. No, 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 no. The road is blocked. Maps don't show fallen trees, flooded roads, or the random deep potholes anxious to tear your wheel off its axle. Hang on. Oh, slide. Slide. No, 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 no. Out here. Oh, that was awesome. Out here, county roads often change from a sturdy gravel base to slippery, slimy mud, impossible to drive on even for 4x4s. And often the maps are just flat out wrong. Oh, holes. Super sail coming right for me. The roads are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. This could really clobber me. If you see a tornado, there's an excellent chance large hail is in the vicinity. So ask yourself if you're prepared to tackle X factors with this going on. Ah, ah. That just came inside of my car and broke. There's my windshield here. When hail cracks your window, tiny shards of glass can fleck into your face and eyes, which is why safety glasses on standby is imperative. How fast can you escape on a road covered with icy golf balls? Or a road buried in 6 to 12 inches of hail sludge? Any thunderstorm out there could discharge a lightning bolt with your head's name on it at any time. And storm chasers all agree the most dangerous aspect of chasing are the many, many, many many miles of commuting. Large gatherings of chasers tend to accumulate under isolated thunderstorm events, and more often than not everyone chases in relative harmony. 
Experienced chasers can move fast together in tight caravans, and they pull completely off the road when pausing to film. Others, not so much. Whenever a high risk of tornadoes is forecast near a populated area, suddenly every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a camera phone in that county becomes a storm chaser and drives into their siren blaring streets to catch their glimpse of the madness. In these situations, hordes of local sightseers and amateur chasers can clog the roads, often smashing into each other. In metropolitan areas, rush hour traffic times coincide with prime tornado time. That and a media-induced exodus can create an epic log jam of sitting ducks. For these reasons, many chasers avoid heavily populated areas altogether. Many, many chasers, chasers avoid chasing populated areas. Beautiful axis. There's also plenty of furry friends out there that don't want to get sucked up either. Get out of the way, mule deer and others that are completely oblivious. This is what a car looks like after hitting a mule deer. Don't ask how the knife got bloody. Look at that. Really? Oklahoma. Oh my god, look at that rain wrap. There are several other features feeding into and out of a supercell that are capable of blowing out your windows or rolling your vehicle. A surging rear flank downdraft wrapping powerful wind and rain around a developing tornado dangerous downbursts, straight line winds, and thin rivers of concentrated powerful wind called inflow jets blasting into a feeding tornado. The perfect tornado is a well-lit visible tube descending from a high base. The low precipitation storm mode allows you to marvel these tornadoes from miles away, but this is a rare experience even for the most dedicated chasers. The more common experience is a rain-wrapped mess. These obscured tornadoes are difficult to see from a distance and thus can lure aggressive chasers in closer into an extremely dangerous trap. The boundaries of these tornadoes are less defined and almost invisible in the heavy rain. Many chaser vehicles have been rolled while driving right into these outer boundary tornado force winds. We got a tornado right next to us. Look at this. This tornado is right ground right behind me. Okay, we're inside circulation. Hang on. Tornado right behind me. Hang on. Hold. The definition of a tornado has been argued as a violently rotating column of air extending from a cumulonimbus cloud to the ground, even though some non-cumulonimbus clouds can produce landspout tornadoes. But a key word here is air, and air is usually invisible. This can make defining the boundary of the tornado visually confusing and making it closer than you calculated. Yep. Time to back up. Come on, car, go. This condensation funnel has a sharp visible boundary, but there is still violently rotating air around the funnel. Thus, the actual tornado is wider than what is visible. In this case, dust and debris is being lifted, revealing the actual boundary. But this happened in dry conditions when present dust was easily lifted. So you can imagine in more wet conditions, when dust is absent or more reluctant to become airborne, there's often no dust cloud to reveal that boundary. In this tornado, uh, uh. in this tornado, there is no signature long condensation funnel to give away its presence, only a dust cloud. And check out this tornado, no condensation funnel or dust cloud, only a white whirling mist on the ground directly under a swirling base vaguely announced its existence. You can see clear air completely under this mesocyclone, and if you look closely here, you'll notice a brief suction vortices touched down with likely EF3 force winds. But EF1 force wind damage was recorded well beyond the suction vortices, out to the edge of the mesocyclone and beyond. Here is the more likely tornado force wind boundary. This is the birth of the tornado that killed four storm chasers and nearly a dozen others, the infamous El Reno 2013 tornado. It was this clear air deception underneath as well as direction changing, unfathomable growth, and sudden increasing speed that made this tornado the most deadly ever to storm chasers yet.
We've all seen the horror of what a powerful tornado is capable of doing. These are the stories we played over and over by the media, and a common comment I see on this channel is why would anyone ever live in Oklahoma? I hope nobody was in this house. Here are some quarter century statistics those people might find surprising. In the last 25 years, Kansas has had only 57 tornado related fatalities. That's just above two per year. Texas has had only 93, Mississippi 112, Arkansas 121, Oklahoma 131. Tennessee has had 175, Missouri 243, and Alabama leads this stat with 380, almost triple that of Oklahoma. But it only takes one worst case scenario to tip the scales toward another state. On average, about 60 people are killed by tornadoes in the USA per year. Now stack that number against people that are killed in your town by homicide, or drugs, or heart disease. You may think it's crazy living in an area prone to monster tornadoes, but a true monster is clever enough not to be scary. It hides in plain sight, preying on our ignorance. It doesn't roar before it devours us, rather waits for us to openly invite it into our lives. Which leads me to another serious hazard of storm chasing. Four storm chasers have died in action here in the USA, and one in every four people will die of heart disease here. There it is. That's a giant tornado, and it might be coming right this way. Here it comes. Go, 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 go